intercontinental ballistic missiles capable of delivering nuclear warheads across the entire globe to a pinpoint target location, one of the most lethal weapons ever created by mankind. So I decided to make one in Roblox. This is a really fun project to experiment with physics, with particle design, and just with some really cool code. In this video, I'll take you through the theory and code that makes this ballistic missile work in Roblox. And there'll also be a link to the place that I made this in in the description in case you want to check it out and play around with it. So without further ado, let's get into the video. A ballistic missile follows a ballistic trajectory, hence the name, to deliver its payload, usually like nuclear warheads, to a target. So what a ballistic trajectory is, is basically the rocket starts out in a powered state of flight where the boosters are going, so it starts climbing up into the air, it starts tilting to the side, and at a certain point, the engines cut off. Because usually they're solid fuel boosters, and they are lit, and they run until they run out of fuel. So at that point, the rocket is basically just in free fall. But since it generated so much acceleration and so much velocity starting out, it keeps on going higher and higher and higher. And eventually, if all their calculations are right, the rocket drops down and hits its target, causing a lot of damage. So since this is a pretty simple physics equation, I thought I could model this pretty easily in Roblox. One thing I forgot to think about is this acceleration part, because this is kind of hard to model with a simple equation. You can model normal projectile motion very, very easily. In fact, there's a little website I found that can visualize it. So here's like projectile motion. I can change like the angle or the like velocity, the launch angle, whatever. And I can fire the projectile. And so this is a bunch of simple vector math, and I could do that pretty easily. One issue is, is you have this acceleration. So instead of actually learning how to calculate this using math and all the sophisticated math that the people actually making the missiles do, I took a simpler approach and basically calculated the projected drop location every frame using a simple kinematics equation and then used a p controller like there's pid controllers i'm only using the proportional part to hone in on that location so i actually have a, a demo of this and i can play it so this is our rocket and the red line is its projected trajectory so you can see it launches up into the sky and then it drops down you can see the projected trajectory is slowly coinciding with the target and right there it just hit the target so all i'm doing is i'm using a pretty simple equation so you have gravity which is workspace gravity you have the part position and you have the current velocity and then all you have to do to calculate it down here is this little equation right here which solves for your end velocity. And then I just subtract it from the target position. And then we get the difference, which we can apply to our vector force. And I also added some extra stuff just to make it look good. But using this basic premise, like the whole, the whole rocket is driven by these couple lines of code, you can make a pretty convincing travel arc for a ballistic missile. So that brings us on to the ICBM launch project itself, which takes the early strategies implemented by that other project I just showed you, but makes it a little more visually pleasing. And the code is structured a little bit better. So I have a missile silo model inside a silo script with a launch sequence module script. This is a pretty cool way of formatting it, I thought, because all it does is it's a function, the module returns a function, and I just call all the next functions, so like, we start with the powered flight phase, and then we descend, this is like where it's unpowered and just following, 
and then we explode the rocket. And each of these functions is module scripts within our original launch sequence module. And all we're doing is, first of all, the gyro. So the gyro, this makes it really convincing for a lot of a launch because in Roblox, a part, if it's just powered, would kind of just like flail around. So I have to use the gyro to basically make the rocket look at its last position, except like the rocket model itself is inverted, so it looks like the rocket is looking towards its velocity. I try to get it to look towards its velocity all the time. It didn't quite work out for some reason, but this worked pretty well. And then each of these modules is pretty simple. And it's always good to have a lot of tiny modules instead of just one massive script. So this is the stuff I showed you before in a little bit more presentable format. And this little equation, although it looks complex, is just a pretty simple quadratic equation for projectile motion. But I'm kind of abusing the crap out of it since I'm finding a difference. And then right, I'm multiplying it by a lerp just to make it look like the rocket's accelerating. And after that, we just wait and then go back to the next section, which is the descent. Nothing special here. It literally just disables the little engine fire. And that's basically it. And then once it touches something, we go on to the explosion. Now, the explosion is just a ton of particles I made. And the particles can be found like server storage, the mushroom cloud. And it does not look that good, I will admit. But I don't really spend too much time on it. And honestly, the, the Roblox um, particle emitters aren't as bad as I thought they were. Like, Setting them up was pretty simple, and I used the command line just to test to make sure that they could emit, and it looked semi-decent, and it turned out pretty good. And as for the actual like launch, this hatch here is just a prisma prismatic constraint. I have a video on that if you want to learn more. And then in the client side, so let me just play this to demonstrate. You'll notice I have a pretty nifty target animation and you have this massive crosshair and it honestly was pretty simple it looks it looks kind of nice but it was pretty simple all that happens is when the server tells the client to start picking a target we tween the camera and then i take the crosshair model that i duplicated from replicated storage and moved it to where the player was and then once they click i disconnect it and send it back. So the code itself is kind of ugly, but it does the job. And this is more just about the physics and just seeing if I could do it. And honestly, a missile in of itself is just pretty cool. And if you're interested in putting this project into your own project the only files or the only models that are outside of the missile silo model is the missile model and the mushroom cloud which are both in server storage you should be able to move those directly and the pick target and crosshair so pick target is a remote event that the missile silo script uses and the crosshair is just the visual, like, red crosshair that you see on the client side. And then I have one starter player script, which you can just copy directly over. So, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about the physics and a little bit about the code that went into my ICBM. This is a pretty fun project, pretty simple, just to see if I could do it, and it turned out quite nicely, especially since I will have to implement ICBMs for my upcoming game, Submarine Warfare, and it's just a good learning experience to figure out how they work and how to go about implementing them. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, like it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content and comment any questions or suggestions down below. But other than that, I hope you have a nice day and goodbye.